All of a sudden this building blows up beside us. And then I hear, Boom. Wow. Where's he keeping the extra RPGs just though? He's just like three. got one. Right. Oh, oh he's got his pocket. It's from pocket. It's it's pocket. pocket. Right, he's got a go. bag of holding. He'd be rusty. Oh my God. <laughs> They're fun. We should, we should definitely tase each other at some point. We definitely should. Welcome back, everybody, to another great episode of Total Recoil. Well, you're going to have to take my word for it because you haven't watched it yet, but trust me, it's going to be a really good episode. Just trust him. He's Just very trust trustworthy. Please. Yeah. Very, I mean, look at those eyes. Would those eyes lie to you? Look at them. No. I'm Israel Wright, your host, former Green Beret. It's good to be back with you folks. And once again, with me, the amazing, the stupendous, the extremely knowledgeable and talkative, the very bald, Paul Meixner. How you doing, Paul? Hey, folks. How you doing? I'm Paul Meixner, former U.S. Army infantryman. I now teach weapons and tactics both inside the film industry and to civilians and law enforcement and maybe even you. Before we get into today's video, we have some exciting news to share. Gameology is launching a brand new show called Ask a Gamer, where we ask 100 gamers like yourselves some fun and possibly polarizing questions. Right now, we are taking fan submissions for the next episode. If interested, you can submit your footage using the link below. We can't wait to hear from you. Folks, today we're going to be looking at weapons from GTA 5, Grand Theft Auto 5, folks. Yes, the fictional state of San Andreas it looks strangely like Los Angeles, California in a very bad way. Uh, I know these Even streets. Even more recently. The mean the, streets, yes, the mean the streets normal. of San Andreas. Let's go look at some weapons from GTA 5, team. Look at that rail system right off the bat. Yes. It makes sense to have a way to attach optics to a pistol. Modern pistols are even coming with cutouts for you to attach a micro red dot. Mm. That's a lot of stuff to think about though. Where with the red dot, you don't even look at the dot, you don't look at the reticle in the dot, you look at your target and you superimpose the like a heads up display. Uh -huh. So it's way quicker once you get used to it. This on the other hand, this is nuts. You got so much room for improvement, man. Yeah, well, so <laughs> the thing is like, yeah, I suppose. That, that whole slide, I believe, moves. And so there's rails on the side. I have no idea unless you want to do some weird gangster Yeah, the whole slide moves. So everything is going to be moving back and forth. And with these micro red dots that they're mounting on modern pistols, uh, yeah, it moves back and forth, but they're making them so durable enough now that like, this is a machine pistol, there we go. See, already we can tell this is unrealistic because he's shooting a gun in El San Andreas and people are reacting to it. Yeah. Profile does look like a couple real, I don't want to say firearms, but um, FN has this like, it's like a paintball gun. It's not for paint, it's for like, you know, dealing with internment facilities or prisons or uh, less than non -lethal. lethal. okay. Yeah, and it's in a similar shape to that. There are some like non-name brand, like things you get on Amazon that look kind of similar, but this is a legit, you know, pistol, a firearm. And I did like the sights. I did like the rail was set up so you could use the iron sights if you want. That was cool, but there's no reason to have a rail that big on that handgun. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason to have the rails on the side. That's just silly. Otherwise, I like the profile. You get rid of like the things on the side and you know, it looks like a, like a five inch barrel. Like I, I like a full size 1911 or like my the pistol I use for work the most is like a Smith & Wesson MP 2.0. It's a lot of syllables. <laughs> I like the longer sight profile. I'm a big guy. I don't mind carrying a larger firearm. Looks like we're right around thing. Melrose and La Cienega next to the Beverly Center. <laughs> Oh, LA, typical person yeah, sleeping on the street. Yeah, there we go. I'm surprised there's not more. Was, oh my goodness, whoa! he just kamikazed himself out of that helicopter. Whew. Anything about the audio, how it sounds, anything like that? I mean, no, there's not, it's okay. the reports. Now here's the thing, once in a while you will see, you know, a bullet lead. Have you ever seen that before where it's not a tracer around, but you can almost see it like zoom out because looking, of like- Looking down the, the barrel, yeah. You're in sometimes and, you almost get that impression like you yeah. can see it traveling for a quick yeah, second. Yeah, unless you're using a Mark 19, which then you can just see them because they're so goddamn huge. Just launching beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep. Watch them fly out boom, there. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. SNS pistol, the sexy, naughty, saucy pistol. <laughs> there we go. Arr. Okay, so oh, you know, a little, you know little what, compact. Uh, you know what I bet SNS stands for? Saturday Night Special. Ah. So Saturday Night Special is a, a term coined by uh, these very, very compact little pocket pistols because mm. they were often used in a lot of crime, a lot of murders, and a lot of them were like like Jennings was a company that made one. There's a couple other companies where they they weren't super reliable. They kind of fell apart. A lot of them were made out of pot metal. That is a huge trigger guard. So this looks cool. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. The sights are decent on it. Um, right. You got this, your standard three dot sights. It looks like uh, it's either gonna be a double action or a single action pistol. It's got a hammer fired. 
It's funny that dude's doing the old school weaver stance where like standing off to the side like this. When I first, what were you taught? Were you well, I was taught because stuff? we had body armor. I was taught to straight, straight on, on to present the plays. Yeah, that's to right. the five. Yeah, that's the old school training, folks. Don't listen yeah. to that. As long as you have good base fundamentals and you can shoot, great. Yeah. They used to teach weaver stance. Now keep in mind, this guy isn't supposed to be like a professional. He's just a criminal, right? So what tactical training does he have? Oh, he has his degree in criminology. Criminology, there we go. That's <laughs> When you're standing like this, it's harder to like traverse, right? Where if you're more square on with your target, it's easier. I don't know what kind of weird grip here I'm doing, but <laughs> it's easier to, to you know traverse, or in the film industry we call this panning. Here now, we are at just outside Cedar Sinai <laughs> Hospital. You know this is quite the fight where he has like a small compact pistol. Saturday Night Specials were usually like 380 caliber, which I have a couple 380s, I've carried 380s. A 25 ACP, which that's not even worth carrying in my, my humble opinion. Mm. It's interesting, he's going up against dudes with body armor with a, you know, a tiny caliber little pistol and they got like rifles and full size pistols. So good luck. That's usually like if you're a defensive person or you know, good old reliable person, that's a gun you use to get another gun. <laughs> you know? So, Shoot the guy, take his it's gun. It's kind of like, I think I quote Clint Smith a lot, but like a handgun is a gun you use to fight your way to your rifle. <laughs> That classic look, man, of the MP5. MP5, one of the reasons it was used for so long, it's fairly reliable design, but it's also just so smooth shooting. I don't know if I've fired an SMG that's more smooth shooting than an MP5. Now it's funny, instead of the slap, he's giving it a smack. In the instruction manual, it says to slap it, to slap the bolt carrier group forward. The only things I don't like about it are last round hold open. Oh, okay. So once you're empty, it's either you gotta count your rounds or, or just you feel it, you just click, oh, it's time to change the mag. And so there, there are two things. One, you don't know exactly when you're empty. And two, you actually have to go through the whole process of pulling the bolt all the way back, changing out the mag, and then slapping it forward. So it adds a lot more than just like a standard AR or most modern sub guns. The bolt locks the rear, you just drop the mag, put a new mag in, and either hit your bolt release or, you know, rock it forward. Mm. So it adds a couple steps. Now is he trying to shoot that helicopter or is this just showing, is this just a demonstration? Because you're not going to take that down with a 9mm. And it's weird, you see there's no cheek weld here either, you know, he's not like putting his... So to get a cheek <laughs> weld, you look like a chipmunk, but you want to drop your cheek right onto the buttstock of your weapon and it provides a, a, a con consistent sight picture. Needs to much better accuracy. You know, your support hand and you point at your target for quick reflexive mm -hmm. shooting. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're in a short room with people shooting at you, you don't really have the time to line up and get the perfect... You just point and shoot. Right, you gotta you trust know, that muscle memory. Shooting. Did you ever do any like uh, reflexive shooting drills when you're on teams or? Well, it's been a long time. I remember we did, I mean, we would work on getting faster and faster and we'd go through those rooms and stuff like that. Shoot you know, on the cool, range and cool. stuff like that. So you try not to do that all the time. You no, know, you no, try to no, pick up the right. side picture every time. Sometimes that tends to happen because you're doing right. so, you do it so much. You know? Uzi was uh, developed as one of the first weapons that uh, Israel started to develop on their own. They wanted to be able to create their own firearms and the parameters were it had to be easy to make, easy to maintain, be rugged and durable and able to operate in desert environments. Mm. It's a stamped sheet metal receiver, which stamped sheet metal receivers are, are much, much expensive than milling it out or injecting molded plastic and polymers weren't quite to the level they are now when this thing was developed. It has a charging handle on top and if you notice it's kind of cut out. Most of them are rings. I don't haven't seen one like that particular in person but you know they could be taking liberties with the video game or there could be a micro Uzi thing. I haven't fired a micro Uzi yet. I fired a bunch of Uzis though full size. One issue with the Uzis they have a grip safety on it kind of like a 1911 but a lot of people can't grip the pistol grip like a normal pistol because then they don't depress it enough and if huh. you don't depress it enough the weapon either won't work or it'll cause a malfunction. That means that the safety is on the, the pistol grip itself. So you usually there's a manual down. safety which is on the selector switch but then there's also a safety yep you gotta like so let me just I'm just kidding. Let me just pull mine up. <laughs> Let me pull my Uzi yeah. up. The Uzi became super popular um, in Hollywood using it. Actually, Dude, I mean, uh, that was like the uh, bad guy gun of choice yeah, in like the 1980s. Schwarzenegger. Tango and Cash, the scene near the end when they're using this construction equipment and they're attacking the compound. They get out of these like end loaders or, so, or I think levelers and they just whirr, whirr, mm -hmm. and it's got like a three foot long muzzle blast coming out of the Uzi. Oh, it's great. Well, the last thing about the Uzi, the reason they wanted, um, their, their thinking behind this between having the magazine back 
back here is in case it's at night or whatever they wanted to be able, since they're already holding onto the grip, to know right where the magazine inserts. And that was their reasoning behind it, so. Mm. Okay, so this is inspired by AK-47. The reason it's called an AK-47 is because in 1947, that's when the design was adapted. It's not when it was perfected, though. The first AK variant was uh, stamped receiver. Because they were making their um, submachine gun at the time, they used the same thickness of steel, but it wasn't as reliable because you're shooting a rifle caliber bullet, right? Mm. And so it was accurate enough for the submachine gun, but pistol caliber bullets are not going as far, so you don't have to worry about as much accuracy since as long as it like, you know, shoots out to like, you know, 50 meters, okay, you're, you're good. But like a rifle round, you want to be able to shoot out to 200 meters, 300 meters, maybe mm. even longer. So it's like a really modern AK-47. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's newer variants where they you know try to improve the reliability of the internal, but it's the same basic function. And you can get rails and well, like I've got a couple uh, AKMs. You know, there's a bunch of variants. AK-74 is another one where they have it's uh, you can tell the difference mainly from the straight up. Or the magazine is more vertical. It's a good gun. Good gun for you know a criminal to have. Good gun for a farmer to have. Makes a great ranch rifle. They're just solid, reliable weapons. Again, as with the MP5, no last round hold open so mm. you just gotta, you gotta pay attention rock it out look at that shoulder thing that goes up what we see right there is a barrel shroud i've never seen a barrel shroud quite like that before usually they have holes in it instead of like those weird oval shapes what a barrel shroud does is it keeps you from burning yourself because barrels get hot as you run more rounds through it right okay so that's cool that almost looks like a mesa tactical buttstock so that's like an, an adjustable it's not a collapsible it's an adjustable buttstock and that allows for different lengths to pull for different body types um and those are cool some of them actually have like kind of a pneumatic spring in them to help absorb some of the recoil. Mm -hmm. uh, ironically, the high point carbines also have that going on. Uh, you see a pistol grip there and that just makes it a little more maneuverable for defensive shooting or turkey hunting. With a pump gun, you also make sure you can't short stroke it because if you short stroke a pump gun... What do you mean short stroke? You don't force it. You know what I mean? You got to be violent. With you want to fully thing. cock it all you the way? You want to fully yeah. cock the, the fully cock. The cock. <laughs> Now this looks like a Mossberg 500 or a Mossberg 500 clone. And the reason I say that is you can see the safety on top right there, mm -hmm. which you would like this gun because it makes it much more ambidextrous. Oh, great. You got like some kind of muzzle device up front if it's got a choke on it or something. Combat shotguns don't have chokes, but hunting shotguns, a lot of them have chokes and you can take it out and put it in. It adjusts the pattern of shot that you have depending upon what you're hunting and what range it is. So. Like a, a wider or narrower yep. group yep. for yep. buckshot? Yep. Like no, not buckshot, generally birdshot or some various level of shot. Because oh, like, okay. you're going to use different rounds for goose than you are for rabbit. Now, I'm not a professional hunter. I, I'm getting more into it. So take that with gigantic block of salt. <laughs> he, just, he just took a round right through the lung there. All right, there you go. That's oh, all right. He's an invincibility. Well, he's, he's, he's hopped up on cat. And I don't see any reloading going on either. One of the advantages of a shotgun is that you carry multiple rounds on you, and as you're shooting, you keep reloading. So you mm -hmm. just keep topping it off. He's reloading a little bit. You see him put him in there. Mm -hmm. They're very effective. Like I said, it's one of the few in real life one shot, one kill. You can do it with handguns, you can do it with rifles, but like shot placement is key. Now, with this, it's not like Contra or Super C with the spread. You have to aim. <laughs> the you spread know? shot. And put a red dot or a holographic sight on that thing and you you're going to be very effective and then it's just practice come on now get some Did, I hey do five stars like, i do appreciate like the open world format of this game i think that's really cool. oh yeah super cool the generic sniper rifle Hey, a realistic looking reticle. Is it? Is that a, go. Oh, you've got some I'm not a sniper. I'm just getting into long distance shooting now. Most of my work is like close up or like urban stuff. This looks more realistic. I haven't seen one with multiple chevrons on it. Also multiple chevrons that are spaced out the same. So hmm. I imagine that'd be more like Mills or MOA. I mean, I said like, it's not exactly that. I'm a fan because I don't like math of uh, using BDC reticles, which are bullet drop compensators. So this is realistic. You can make these shots. These shots aren't too far out. What's so, not realistic is the small amount of traffic on the road. <laughs> at this part, like this, this part has got to be like in LA. You know, even with the shootout, it's still yeah, even, not yeah. not realistic for traffic at all. See, I don't know what caliber this is. You know, I like 762 NATO, but that's just because like I'm not a super long distance shooter yet. Uh, it's, it's easily available, but there's a ton of stuff. Like 338 Lapua has become real, real popular. That's a real re flat trajectory bullet. Reach out and touch someone. There's a bunch of stuff available. Mm. 
They're legal on the beaches, as we can <laughs> see. As see like, this has got to be Venice. I'm guessing this is near Venice. That leaf side I mean, out the there. The mountains are there, so probably not Venice. Yeah. But I just RPG'd, I think, like, that's where I'd find Believe it. Believe it or not, I went out to my first Milsim event out in Victorville not too long ago, and there oh, yeah, were yeah, Airsoft RPGs. They had Airsoft RPGs. Dude, Airsoft boys get into it, and girls, and gals, and unicorn kin, and whatever. Um, they really, really get into it. And a lot of them will buy like legit cry. Oh yeah, you know, they'll Haley buy all gear. the gear and stuff. I think that yeah. was a great move for Haley Strategic to get into Airsoft and help yeah. bridge the gap. Connect the communities. Yeah. yeah, so RPGs are great. They're just super reliable, reasonably robust. It's a reusable launcher. They're inexpensive to make. They're, they're pretty damn accurate. And you can smell them too when they're coming at you. Huh. You can smell them. Yeah. And you can kind of see them. It's like this weird, like glowing, like red, like it, like the first time you're like, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Got, we got ambushed in Iraq with a couple of RPGs driving through town one day, and you see that vapor trail that whoop, you know going past. And you're like, oh, whoa, that's uh, okay. We're getting shot at. Isn't yeah. it weird? Like the first few times that happens, you're like. You're like watching it from like out. You react, right? But like right. you're like kind of watching it happen. You're kind of like, disconnected. You're like, oh, this is what it's like to get ambushed with an RPG. First time I was rocketed, which this is a rocket propelled grenade, but this was big rockets. Uh, we were standing on the city council building at Dujal. And all of a sudden this building blows up beside us. And then I hear, <sighs> boom. Wow. Yeah, that was wild. Where's he keeping the extra RPGs just though? He's two, just like three. got one. Right. He's just one, all you need is one. Oh, oh, he's got his, oh, his, his pocket. pocket. His front in, pocket. Right, he's got a go. bag of holding. <laughs> so it's it like I said, it's a pretty robust system. It's pretty reliable and it's pretty simple to use. You still got to make sure your back blast, you know, area. Back is blast clear. area clear. And you know that's ingrained into us for using rock. We you know predominantly the AT4. But they'd often give me the clue. It was a giant thermal site that you could attach okay, to it or yeah. just use. On its own, so we went out on LPOPs or ambushes. They're like, "Hey, let's make the machine gunner carry the clue because he's big and strong." <laughs> so here, Mike Snare, you you carry this. Oh, look at this! So oh, that's a it. huge barrel pistol. Single it shot. Looks like a shotgun or something, man. Yeah, it's got some engraving on it. So do you know why they have engraved uh, ridges into the top strap? No. So it helps with reflection. I prefer actually huh. my rear sight. I don't like to have dots on it. I just, my favorite for like defensive or fighting use is a U notch with uh, serrations because it helps with reflection. So this is neat. All right, he's got a decent grip there, you know, thumbs forward grip. That's some, some beautiful engraving that almost looked cast. In that, Single uh, shot, engraving. baby. Probably that's for all. the video game purposes, probably box power. Fewer rounds me means uh, more, more power. I mean, that's a big looking bullet. I wonder if that's like a 4570. That's even bigger than that. Almost looks like a shotgun barrel. That's actually a taser. I've been tased before. Oh. It, was, it was fun. I'm and good. Stun guns are great. Tasers are fun to mess with your buddies. Or like when I was at Ranger School in the morning when we were in Derby phase, we would do combatives every morning. Uh -huh. I don't know if they do that at SFAS. They would throw down a taser in between some of us, or they just walk by and slide into your cargo pocket. And so you know, <laughs> sometimes you wouldn't know if your opponent had one or not. And then you'd be rusting. Oh my God. <laughs> They're fun. We should, we should definitely tase each other at some point. We definitely should. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like something out of Apex Legends. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. But I don't... I love wait, the recharge What's going on? It's recharging. Oh, okay. I love that. With most tasers, too, they launch out two barbs, and then you can reload the, the packets. You can stuff. reload them? But not just that, but after you do it, if like, you're trying to handcuff them and they're not moving, you can hold it down on them even without recharging. There's uh, usually two contact points, so then it acts like a stun gun. And it's weird that a stun gun doesn't actually shoot, yeah, it's not but a, a taser shoots, yeah. so that makes it a little confusing, but yeah. Dead calm. There you go. Everybody should have a flare gun. Billy Zane, you right? You can buy in the these face. at Walmart. You can buy them at Walmart, little red ones. Good for safety. At least you used to be able you to. You get to lost in downtown yeah. San Andreas. Hey, where am know. I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just started another forest fire. <laughs> Everyone should have a flare gun because they're fun. But especially if you're on a boat or you're in the wilderness or something, they're just cool. And there's several different kinds. You have like pen flares, or you ever like, yeah. oh man, I forget the designation now, but the big like tube ones where you mm -hmm. go boom, or the star clusters. Right. Parachute flares. <laughs> musket, the I know mus about muskets. Musk I know about the rat. Folks, if you want to see me and Cameron fire off a dog lock musket, go ahead and check out Shift Fire Lethal Antiquities. Oh, I missed that one. That sounds awesome. Oh, it's awesome, man. You did the whole pour and pack. Pour and pack, like all that kind awesome. of stuff, man. It was yeah. super cool. This yeah. looks like a flintlock musket. You see the yep, flint yep, there, the flint right there, there, the piece there. So oh, these wow. are it's just wonderful. And here's the thing, here's the thing, folks. Oh, Black powder guns don't require a, a background check, and they're tons of fun. 
tons of fun. Like yep. I can't wait to get a cap and ball pistol and mess with them. Yeah. Ah, uh, the dirty, gritty, grimy world of GTA 5. Well, I hope you're happy, folks. Los Angeles. Bunch of degenerates. Uh, no, that was, was fun looking at all these, uh, all very baseline kind of real world weapons translated into the GTA world. What did you think, Paul? Uh, yeah, it, everything except for, like I said, that pistol at the beginning seemed uh, The super rail realistic. pistol? The super rail, <laughs> super, super base. I think, you know, they should maybe figure out how to carry more rounds and more RPG. <laughs> Maybe like a backpack, just to, you know, kind of give the lie to the MP5. Like, it, it was like almost they were influenced by real world weapons and just stylized a little bit for the game. So, yeah. you know, I'm cool with that. That's yeah. cool. Good stuff, folks. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Total Recall. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page for more videos like this. If you want to hang out with me and Cameron Vath, head over to Shift Fire, where we explore and appreciate all things military culture. And you can listen to me and Cameron talk all things military pop culture by going and listening to the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast. And if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go over to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. Uh, if you want to follow my shenanigans, you can check me out at Mav11B on Instagram or watch me and my fellow people train other people uh, on Instagram and YouTube at Drake and Train Division or check out my podcast on most social media platforms, Thunderpunk Radio. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one. Felt the teeth. Yeah. Before we get into to, <laughs> before we get into today's, why can't I say get into today's?